You better let him run till he quits Fighting like Moby Dick Pull him up way for the kids Show me your fish Uh-huh, better show me your fish Uh-huh, show me your fish This is Sport Fishing Championship Better set your notifications. We are live on YouTube, sportfishingchampionship.com. It's the Mississippi Gulf Coast Billfish Classic, the second golf division stop of the Sport Fishing Championship. Biloxi, Mississippi, 80 boats took off two days ago in search for that, their portion of the $1.5 million plus prize pool. I'm Robbie Floyd. Peter Miller, we're looking at those rigs out there. They played a big factor, those grass lines. and. Man, we caught more fish than we did last year, so we're doing something right. They're doing everything at those rigs, Robbie. They're catching bait, then they're catching tunas, then they're dropping for swords, and they're catching marlin right around those rigs. Very popular site for these guys, this particular tournament. You see some of our featured teams out there on the water, and the reason I said set your notifications is right when we went to come on air, I got a little notification from YouTube saying, hey, we're live. I you and I are the first ones to know we're live, right? But you can do it at home as well. Hey, Robbie, that's exactly right. And we are going to day two to team all in, and they are on a fish, and they're on a big one, and they're backing down ferociously at this fish. When it's up on the surface, you got to go for it. All in, a pretty big bow, but it looks like a sitter console made that run to wherever they are. Sharing some water, Greg Trenner. <laughs> at the reel. Greg Trenner's not pulling around. Yeah. He's, he's generally at the reel. Trent, Trenner does it, uh, he does it and he does it very well. Where's he going? Where's he going? He's paddling towards that fish. When you can't get there fast enough and you're fired up, you're bent over the gunnel like that, <laughs> you want to paddle, you want to do anything you can. You get your little oar out of your rowboat. <laughs> that's where I was going. Do what you got to do. <laughs> that's where I was going next. He's Ball. not even taking wraps. He's just taking, he's just taking grabs. He's a big boy. He, he said, this is yeah, mine. Yeah. You mine. I got you. And that's just not Still one, good. two, three, but four fish. Oh, Count them. Team all in four on day number two. That is such an incredible amount of fish to catch in the Gulf of Mexico on a single day. You know, to complete those four fish to the transom, that's impressive work. I bet you they even had other bites. That bite over in, in that area was hot. After blanking on day one, again, we get the official words uh, when they do actually come back to shore. But that 62 Viking, Captain Blake Bridges with uh, with the foresight and the knowledge to put them in those areas. Might have taken them a little while to get there, might not have. Again, when you see in that center console, how far did they really want to run? But they were in the right spot at the right time. I did 250 miles in one day in a center console, going 70 miles an hour in each direction, hanging on for my life. Yeah. Did you have a chance to stop for fuel on the way back? No, didn't need it. We took care of business. We went Go on. We went bottom fishing, we went tuna fishing, and then we ran back 90 miles back to... What uh, kind of uh, quality uh, mile per gallon were you getting out of what engines? We, we had quad Mercury 450 racing motors. That's how you do it. And we were in a 40-foot uh, a Invincible. Well, those racing motors aren't known for their fuel efficiency. They're known for their high high speed and high horsepower. But we were you, going high speed. Yeah, you were, you were doing something right. At all end, did something Knuckles right. Knuckles hitting a fiberglass. That's all I know. Every time I go to Orange Beach, Alabama, that's all you see is Knuckles end to the fiberglass. Your old nickname. Release Blue Marlin, release Blue Marlin. You see that four different times from 9.43 in the morning yesterday to 1.35 in the afternoon yesterday. It was a small window, but a very fast and furious window. All, all in a 1,400 point total, and then they are still running. They still feasibly could fish, but you got to make it back sometime. They got one an hour for three hours, and they took a little break, took a little nap, had something to eat, and then caught a fourth one a few hours later to catch those four. Look at Quantified uh, again. The way that they did what they did was come catching multiples of white marlin. Looking at my stats here, eight whites. Uh, looks like they're up to three sailfish now. So that means since we went off the air in CBS Sports Network, Peter, they've caught another sailfish. <laughs> can't Quantify do it at the end because they, they're they really running out of time. You can't count Quantified out at any time because these guys now have eight whites, 
three sales. They've got 11 billfish. You know, the top boat in the tournament has four blues. They're winning the tournament. But these guys have eight billfish. That's, I mean, that's eight, awesome. eight whites and three uh, three sails. That's 11 fish. That's 11 dropbacks. That's 11 completions. They are capable of catching a few more. And who knows? There's a little bit of time left. Yeah. And maybe they can take that charge and go to the lead. Yeah. And uh, again, those little bitty differences here and there with those 75 point sailfish uh, keeps them out of those ties. What, what was our tie? It was 16th place. There's got to be 20 some people with one blue marlin. Um, if they had one blue marlin and a sail, they would already be in 15th and, and so on. Yeah, the, these sales are a big deal. All right. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I think we're, we're going live. We're going Peter. live to Team Badonkadonk. Uh, and, and this is happening as we are on air right now, live. They've had some really good footage. And are you kidding me? That is a blow up right there. This is live, live. We so. actually talked about this, Robbie, while we were having lunch before we came back to do this live segment on YouTube Live on the Sport Fishing Championship channel. And we said, Badonka Dunk didn't catch one. And we come, we sit down at this desk, and here we go, and this is being bumped right into the studio. We get to see this, and you all get to see this. What brought it up was they had the best camera. It was locked on, like, perfect viewing. And I say that now at MICs, but it, they had the best stuff throughout the day, and we're like, come on, guys, catch something. And they did. Getting a little sticky out there. Again, it's an announcer's jinx, but you saw a big splash out there in distance. All right, Peter, let's talk about certain things you're supposed to do as a team. One, when you catch that fish, oftentimes you have to call in that I'm hooked up at some tournaments, correct? Most tournaments you call in, Badonka Donk hooked up right now. You have the screenshot of the time that you hook up, and then you've got to fight this fish. You have to determine what that fish is on video. You can see it with your own eyes. Everyone can see it and agree what it is, but if you don't have it on video, it is not going to count. So they have to identify it. It has to be easy to identify. And then when you get to the fish the, to the boat, you have to make sure that you touch that leader or it goes through the first tip on the tip guide on that rod. But these guys are using, you know, different type structure here. It's heavy tackle. They're going to be grabbing that leader and taking wraps on it, and that's how they're going to get this release on this fish. All right, we know it's not Captain James Stanley. We know it's not, what, Sammy Hargroder, right? Uh, we've got Chris Hargroder, who's an angler. Taylor Gray's the mate. That's got to be Taylor there on the right. I got Reagan Gafford, an angler slash mate, and Jason Ardeon. And again, this is live, live, live. You know, we're watching this on YouTube live, Marlin fishing in the Gulf of Mexico out of Biloxi. Yeah, Biloxi, Mr. Yeah. And you're seeing the struggles for real. And, you know, oftentimes we can condense this, and for the TV show, you don't want to be watching because what we've seen hours, a couple of hours, even for a tuna before. If that was a tuna, that was a big jumper. It was too far for me to recognize. No, it was definitely a blue marlin. <laughs> it was tearing up that water. That There's, there's no fish that's going to do that. A blue fin will, will crash on their first bite. If it's a surface bite, it'll have a huge explosion, like we talked about before, like dropping a Volkswagen yeah. out of a helicopter. And there are blue fin out there, I think. Yes, it, but they will not jump like that. They're not going to go jumping away, causing total mayhem on the surface of the water, unless they were tail wrapped or body wrapped, but they're not going to jump. So this is a blue marlin. It's a good sized blue marlin. Okay, they're not it's too far It's coming at you live and direct, as Chris Jones would say. Now, is that Venice? Uh, Mississippi. They're about 100 Canada. miles away from the takeoff, Robbie. Is that Venice there, like where it comes out in that boot? Uh, and this, are, again, are general areas. I don't know. I know Italy shaped Mobile. like a boot, Robbie. I, no, I, Mobile would be around there, right? You get to Mobile before you get All there. I have to say is show me your fish, Madonka. Show me your fish. fish. That's right. Ow, ow. And if they do get this in, you know, that'll be 350 points. But when you want to talk about live, live, and we talk about live all the time, we could have a little delay. Madonka Dog were the first ever actual live. Again, if they say something, uh, you know, it's on the web, but we, we can't control what they're doing. This is real. This is how it happens out on the water. We are making history in the arena, which is known as the Gulf of Mexico. And this is live, live, as live as it gets, with no delay. And this is some special stuff we're seeing right here. Technology has come a long way. And to be able to watch blue marlin fishing 100-plus miles off the coast of 
Biloxi is just mind boggling. I'm just so happy to be a part of it. Sport Fishing Championship, putting it all together. Co-host Rob, we got JM Associates. I mean, this is phenomenal. Preach Productions on the boat with the camera hardwired in. They're never gonna lose battery. And watch it lose battery. Yeah, when, we're, when we're seeing that map though, that's what I look at that map and if they went around that edge, that's where how you get back to Biloxi. I believe they're off like beyond Venice um, where they would be. And, and they had the opportunity. Yeah, what we did, we saw Rebecca do that, right? We saw Rebecca go and go towards Louisiana and Texas. So that would be going towards Point Cadet. So yeah, they came out, or who knows what they've done up to this point, but they went more westerly. Right, they, they went west, and obviously they did a little running in possibly to find some water that they could fish in prior to lines out because, you know, it's, it's hard to just pick up your lines and get in early. You want to milk it till the very end. Hargroder's working the chair there for the young man. He's turning it for him. You know, you always want to stay direct and lined up with that fish, especially when they cut to the corners. You want to spin them hard on the leader. Again, the badonka donk. I mean, this boat's, uh, we, we've seen it last year. We've seen it this year. Based in Louisiana, so of course they're going to go closer to Louisiana to fish, right? I mean, this is where they would go out on the weekends. Yeah, I mean, they've done their research. You know, we, we talked about the, uh, you know, the aquaculture and the ecology and the oceanography and the chlorophyll and the currents and the water temps and the altimetry. I mean, this is everything they put together and they shake it up in a magic eight ball. <laughs> yeah, right. And they say, go there. That's Better gone. not tell you now. That's Don Hargroder on that uh, 76 Whitaker. That's what they were on. That is some boat. That mezzanine deck, I, I could live on their mezzanine deck back, back there. And we're watching it, everything go down live. He's got some heat on him now. He's gonna wanna start pumping that fish. Give us some water. He, want cold, he wants cold water. Yeah. He's got heat on that fish right now. You can see the captain spinning the boat. Sammy, give me some water. The, the back end yeah. is spinning hard. Now, because nobody else can touch that, that uh, rod rail combo, right? Once they did the, ha the handoff, the pass, nobody else can touch it but that angle. Correct. And these are the things for the video verification, right? Let's go ahead and go through some of our rules. We talked about how you're supposed to call in when you get a fish on for some of the tournaments. You have a call in once you do have it officially caught. Yeah, and that's what he's even doing right there. He said, I can't touch. You can do that. He's had, it looks like he's having a little bit of an issue with the drag, drag lever. Looks like he's pushing it up a little bit. Kind of, it's kind of a time, a time sensitive thing when you're fighting this fish. So everyone's like, hey, buddy, you're gonna have to push it up another five pounds, which basically is gonna lift him off the chair. Yeah, but you saw the mate there. He knew right then, he said, you need to do that. Oh, I almost touched it. Like yeah. he, he knew that yeah. and, and there's no messing around. We're seeing what happens. <laughs> we're, go, we're going to blister town right here. This hand is gonna be blistered right in the crux there. Now we're in sure. backup mode, right? Cause you see he's got a winch and he is not making ground. He's, they gotta push that boat backwards. Fish, the fish actually just made a major move and he went slack for a second. He's back on it. They're back tight. He's got to keep pumping. He's got to keep pumping. You know, they're backing up. Now they're going forward, you know, but he's, he's, he's really got to work this fish. This fish is volatile. He was going nowhere. I mean, he was fighting, cranking, winching, and then uh, you see, they started backing up. And he made some ground. You see that flying gaff there, Robbie? They believe that this fish is one they would like to take it's got wings. back to the dock. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't have wings. Well, why is it a flying gap? <laughs> because if he if he takes off with you hooking it up, you're gonna go flying. <laughs> we'll keep All watching right. these guys. Let's uh, move on to Team Quantified. Who? Uh, 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 they're still fishing. I mean, they're fishing their way in too. We question what they would be doing. Um, this is earlier today, Robbie, I believe. But, uh, but, okay, we're watching Quantified in the big screen. We've got Badonka Donk in the small screen, and it looks like their fish is getting close on Badonka Donk. The mate's kind of looking over the side. Chair's been turned. You now, talk to our producer. Is this the sail? No, I was no, like, I was so this, is their, this is a white. Yeah, this, this is, is a, a white nice from earlier, white. possibly on day one. Because they did catch one as we were off air, too. So that was one of their qualified catches. Yeah, Quantified, uh, this is the second of their three sales 
And, you know, they're just taking up that slack. Second of their eight white marlin, rather. Yeah, they really, they really stack the white marlin numbers up on this tournament. Yeah, they caught, what, eight whites, and the total catch for whites, I believe, was at 17. That's right, and they caught eight of those. And then they, and then they, they put a little uh, cherry on top with three sailfish. Again, people that are targeting white marlin have to really be good at what they're doing. I, I've had times when I've gone out white marlin fishing, for instance, in the Bahamas, or even in the DR, and we were missing and, and, and pulling them off left and right. And on this one particular day, we sat down and we said, you know what? I think when we're making the turn to try to get a multiple bite, our hooks are opening off because the wire on the hook is a little too light and right. the fish were actually coming off because Bend the circle the hook. hook was opening. We went to a thicker wire, heavier wire, and we wound up catching a bunch of them. But you got to keep the rod in your hand if you want to catch white marlin. This, this is, is a, another ooh, one. He's bobbing, weaving, trying to get that fish. Yeah. Do yeah. what he wants to do. That's, his, that's the third white that we're looking at now is still badonkadonk on the uh, lower right hand portion. That young man is uh, winching his way with the flying elbow. I mean, the form is out the window. He wore out. Yeah, he's doing what he can. He's in survival mode right now. We saw him uh, have to give him water and pour internally as well as pour on his back. Robbie, I fought a sword once for about two and a half hours and I drank about nine bottles of water. It was one of those steamy, steamy nights. White Marlin number four on the left of your screen for Team Quantified. We're, we're watching a white marlin clinic while we watch live footage from Badonkadonk with a blue marlin being pi piped in live. And they're about 100 miles from the dock. So if they do catch this fish, they're going to have to haul butt and get into shore for it to count. Team Quantify taking up that uh, taking up that slack as they motor back on the fish. Methodical, cool, calm, and collected. That's what you want to do. You don't want to be erratic with any of your movements. You could shift the location of the hook, and we don't want that. From day to night time. That's cool. I just like seeing that line. I don't know if there's Dura Bright. You know, they've got those, those lights really make things pop. That's right. The fish are lit as it is, and now they're double lit. They're like a, they're, they're super duper lit. Yeah, our sixth white, and now the seventh white from earlier today. So we saw a little bit of a move this morning as Badonkadonk still fighting in that. That angler trying to squat into that seat, but this is one of the, this is the movement we saw out of Quantify with that chance of possibly still taking the title, and, and the, the whites just keep adding up. Look at the difference here, Robbie. Let's take a minute and look at Quantified on the left and look at Badonkadonk on the right. We have finesse fishing for the white marlin on the left, and we've got just power grinding and pumping on the right on the Badonkadonk boat because. They have a giant fish on, and there's no finessing a giant fish like this. You're in survival mode, and you're trying to get this fish in. You're in a time crunch. You got a young man doing this. I mean, he's literally huffing and puffing. But he's not quitting. He's no quitter. No, but his leg is going to be sore. You know, it's that summer workout program, right? A lot of guys, football players, baseball players, now they're getting their summer workouts. Guess how this young man is getting his summer workout. <laughs> Pounds, baby, pounds. That's right. We're going to do another uh, split screen, but we're going to continue watching Team Badonkadonk live. And this is Team Rebecca on the left fighting light tackle, doing their work, catching Marlin with a light tackle. Again, the juxtaposition of the two, we've got 30 pound, 30 pound test, lighter tackle, stand up, and then we've got in the chair, we've got an 80 wide with a heavy duty rod with roller guides. It's very different setups, very different techniques. A lot of maneuvering of the boat. Now, Rebecca, from today on the left. They made a move, a couple caught one there towards the end. I think that really helped their chance, moved them up into third place. 
uh, with their third blue marlin the later on this afternoon. Yeah, Latham's using a little forefinger and thumb pressure. And on Badonka Dunk, you got power, power squats and bucket seats and, and uh, just grinding, grinding that reel and just going inch by inch to try to get this fish to the transom. And once they touch that leader, they're not going to let go. This is it. Because if they don't get this leader and wrap on it and get this fish and it takes off again, they'll never get in on time. It's truly impossible. They could be saying, hey, you know what? We're going to fight this fish to completion, and we know we're not going to make it in on time, but we're going to enjoy this moment. There's two schools of thought on this. Depends well, how fast they can run. I'm looking at what their buy-ins for this tournament are, and as far as the Blue Marlin, they're in the $500 Division 5 for the Blue Marlin and the $5,000 Division 2 Blue Marlin. So if that's a, it, it, I mean, that, that's a chance at money. They got to take that Times chance. Times maybe 60 votes. Yeah. You got some encouraging words coming from the crew on Badonka Donk. And of course, you got, uh, you got uh, Team Rebecca pumping, taking short pumps, getting that fish. They got the leader on the fish on Badonka Donk live, coming at you live and direct. Division two, five thousand. This is $103,000 for first place in the Division Let's two, see what five thousand. looks dollar. like. It, if it's the biggest fish in that cat. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. That is a flying gaff. So All what right. happens here, Rob, you so, asked earlier, when you stick the gaff in it, you actually turn the handle and it's already cleated off in the boat. So it's a hook to a cleat with so rope. Division two, $5,000 blue marlin. It's a $207,000 total purse. We know Salt Shaker, Houdini, uh, CE are in this already. Even if you're top three, third place is still 41,000 for your buy-in. I say no more celebration. Open that door. Bring it in. Bring it in yeah. and punch it. Look, look at that. <laughs> look at that. He's cramping. I'm cramping. Somebody give me some bottle out. I'm about to die here. <laughs> he is cramping. Yeah, yeah. You can see it, it for really sure. is. All of that tension finally gets released, and nobody's even looking at him. He's the one that just fought this thing. Yeah. Somebody take a look back. I, I had to help a guy once. We were sail fishing, and it was about 100 degrees out in, in uh, Guatemala, and he started cramping up so severely, I had to kind of lay him down. I wish I. I wish I could get his first name. I could tell you the last. I know we have a little contact with our camera crew. But Rebecca was loaded up with their uh, one of their three blue marlin of the tournament. But Donk Donk just caught Fish their first. Fish must be coming up. Fish is coming up right next to the rig. Right next to the rig. Woo! Got the leader. High speed wraps. And the fish pops off. Light leader. Circle hook in the corner, I bet. And boom. They were about two seconds away getting chafed off in the rig. Not today, though. All right, what a what a day. I mean, it's the wrap up, and then we talk about it. Things can happen crazy at the last minute. If a donk and donk can get a blue marlin at the last second for their first fish of the day, who's to say? Quantified, Rebecca. It just takes time. They're all within that range. If they catch one fish, they could take the win overall. In I tell you, Robbie, in that light tackle, you can get them on the surface, keep them up on the surface, and race back. And you get that leader, and that counts. You don't have to beat the fish down to get them to the boat and have them all huffing and puffing like that young man was on the badonka donk. You can get that fish and get that leader, take wraps, and that's it. For instance, it. it just takes time. Could be tied with uh, our leader. The tiebreaker would be. Who caught the big blue first? SFC coverage of the Mississippi Gulf Coast Billfish Classic is sponsored by Frito Lay, Michelob Ultra, Denison Yachting, and by Salt Life. When it comes to performance, comfort, and functionality, we've got you covered. Performance apparel designed by anglers to make your time on the water better than ever. Salt Life, the official apparel sponsor of the Sport Fishing Championship. Whether you like to ride the wind, 
find your secret cove, or reel them in. Plot your paradise with GPS Map Series from Garmin. This spring, settle in and reconnect with one another. South Padre Island has so many great places to stay. Condos, resorts, and hotels. Oh my! Book your spring getaway today. And start making memories poolside with the people you care about most. Visit SoPadre.com. When you're serious, you are as excited to wake up for a 4 a.m. fishing trip as you were when you were a kid. It means winning three World Sailfish Championships. It means you know what you need and what you don't. Being serious means seeking out the ultimate fishing machine, which is what Peter Miller has found in the unmatched handling, speed, and comfort of an invincible. Pine tar, bay rum, all natural, all natural. It's time for your old soap to take a hike with Dr. Squatch. The best natural men's soap, deodorant, shampoo, and so much more. Dr. Squatch is for players like Justin Herbert, who are here to shake things up. Who break records and hearts. Who are tough on the outside and soft on the skin side. Who only use natural performance enhancement and want their end zone to be fresh. <laughs> Go to DrSquatch.com today. Feel like a man, smell like a champion. Are you ready for the ultimate luxury fishing experience? Join the Sport Fishing Championship talent on the SFC Experience, where you'll explore incredible fisheries and enjoy world-class hospitality from diverse cultures and SFC partner locations. With the SFC Experience, you'll create unforgettable memories with friends, families, or colleagues. Book your trip today and embark on the adventure of a lifetime with the SFC Experience. SFC coverage of the Mississippi Gulf Coast Billfish Classic is sponsored by BioLite, Publix, Durabrite, and by Hop Water, a non alcoholic sparkling hopped water. They win as a team, they lose as a team, and it is high fives for Badonka Dunk. A last second, last minute catch of that young man still to be yet identified. He's high fiving with his left hand. As you can see, his right <laughs> hand is uh, under medical attention right now. He's in the ER. He probably has a bag of ice or something very cold trying to cool his hand off. Got to James. Did a uh, great job. But here, here we have Miss Ma'am again doing some great work with 11 year old. Take it. Yeah, is, now that makes three teens. I would assume that gentleman was in his mid to upper teens. I mean, this is three teens that we've seen catch at least five blue marlin uh, this week. Yeah, you know, again, this is this is when you know you've got the fish, you've got it on camera, you've got the release, you've called it in, you've got the time code, and the release is when you touch that leader. It's not when you cut him free. So this is what they're going to do. They're not going to let go. Sid's going to get low. He's going to hold that leader tight, but this fish is very energetic still. You know, they didn't put a ton of heat on him. Um, impressed, Sid. I'm impressed, buddy. You're getting low. He likes this stuff. He told me he lives for this moment. You know, this is basically getting in a street fight with, with, with someone or a bar fight, but Sid does it with a blue marlin, about a 300 pounder, and he is not letting go. He's basically pinning this fish. And they got great footage for 11-year-old Tate Yancey. Uh, Wes, somebody, can you get the identifier again? Again, one of our teens uh, making Blue Marlin catch and releases. Actually, one caught and kept out of Bonkadonk we saw just a moment ago. A nice waggle there. Um, I've got it officially. Chris Hargroder with that Bonkadonk catch. So we, we thought that was a possibility. Yeah, great job, Chris. Congratulations, Chris. 
Got code of blue coming up after Sid's uh, leadering um, That's like clinic. an emergency, right? Like, watch out. We got a cold blue. That's like, get ready. Well, code we blue need... is one thing. Code oh. brown is something you no, don't, no, don't want to hear. That's actually something you do not want to hear in a hospital. But, no. cold, yeah, code, code blue is Code blue is like, everybody, like, all hands on deck. You better get there. We just saw that out of one team. Uh, day two, code blue had all hands on deck as well. That's right. And they've got a, they've got a Marlin on back there doing its thing, jumping away like a Michael Jordan. <laughs> That's Michael Jackson. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a Michael. I got my Michaels confused. Yeah. Well. Mackenzie Park in the chair, doing work near the rigs. Calm water, a little overcast skies. That's the condition she's, she's in right now, which is really nice. You don't need that blazing sun while you're giving it all you've got. You don't want to cook yourself. Good job by them, Southern Charm, another one of our featured teams. We know Ron Davis, uh, Team All In, kind of been getting the best out of him this week, but they said, I'm not done with this. I've still got time in my week. I can get, I can get Blue Marlin as well. <laughs> Listen to the descriptives there. Real, hey, yeah. Much faster pace than we saw just a she moment ago. She knows what's up. She knows that fish is on the surface and they're going back for it. They just got to keep that hook from falling out of its mouth, depending on what kind of bait they use. If it was a lure, J hook could come out. If it's a circle hook, most likely it'll stay in. It's a little more forgiving. Once they're in, they generally stay in. And the nice thing about it, they usually stay in the corner of the mouth as opposed to down the, the gullet like a J-hook could. Seeing that line slide over with that left hand, just moving it back and forth. It does not want to uh, go on that reel very nice if you don't. Oh, you don't. You do not want to get to, get to that wind-on leader and have it bunch up in the center of the reel and then bind you up. Because that fish surges, when that happens, you got a real problem. Get it? A real problem. Yeah, a real problem. Or that's with the. That's a R. Is that double E, -E, -E, -E or E A? It's a it's a E E. Okay. Ron Davis with the uh, the camera work over on the side right. I like Star that stand up. Has. That stand up kind of. You know, when you stand up and you pump down on that reel like that, the handle she has a much better. Um, what would you say? Angle to be able to put the power on that cantilevered handle. Angle of attack. That's a, that's like an aviation term. Well, yeah. Tired. Great technique. Stand up, sit down. You're not wasting any energy. One of the hardest things you can do on these fights is when you have to wind as fast as you can, when you're kind of burned out from doing this for about a half an hour, and all of a sudden you got to wind and wind and wind because they're coming back on them. That could be really tough when you're taking up that slack. Southern charm and that. Hatteras out of Orange Beach, Alabama. Got that cowboy hat we always see. Ron there in the GoPro footage. Getting uh, two Blue Marlin on the second day. One at nine in the morning, the other one at seven at night. Look at the size of this baseball bat's glue to the front of this fish's head. <laughs> Don't bring up baseball. Both my kids are playing or just finished right now, and it's not a good okay. day in the Floyd house. Look at that pool cue. Look at that pool oh, man. I wouldn't want that thing pointing oh, towards me, though. When uh, that fish is pretty Woo! sleepy at this point. Yeah. Let's go, y'all. He had the turbo Woo! boosters in the, in the water ready to go at any time. I wouldn't have seen it happen. Man, that was tough right there. A lot of time wasted. But uh, we're fixing to get it back right now. What he means by that is the fish was wrapped up, meaning had it been hooked in the mouth, it would have gotten the fish a lot faster. But I think it got a little wrapped up, and it took extra, extra, extra time. And he would have been happier had they gotten the fish and redeployed the baits. But they did get the fish, and that's what counts. Again, uh, these two fish, uh, morning and evening. Either way, got it done. We saw all in with four fish in, uh, in, in day two. It's the one that. They always battle with Southern Charm and All In. They'll be fishing with each other in the next couple of weeks at the Gulf Coast Masters and the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic as well. 10 hours apart on the same day. Yep. Blue Marlin in the morning, Blue Marlin in the night. 
Hope you get some kind of strike in between. Used to be Bandito last year when we saw them. I always remember the ones that got away early on, like in Louisiana. This year, they're, they're getting more. Is that Tucker? Oh, yeah, it is. How old is he? He's 13. 13. Yeah. Not 15. He's either. a teen. We gotta go, Tuck. Go, Tuck, go. So that means he'd be somewhere between like 8th and ninth grade. Again, going right towards the platform. That is a scary moment. Let's go, Tucker. We gotta get our down fire. As long as they're getting closer, it's turning good. hard. They're going back fast. Yeah, and spinning it, too. Spinning Make hard. Sure you get the identifier. Shane's getting it. Yeah, our cameraman was pretty much staying somewhat straight, so they had to swing the back end of that boat around to follow the fish. Chair only goes so far, right? Let's check the chair will spin all the way. I mean, you could spin, you know, uh, probably 180 degrees on that chair, or, or slightly more, but then you'd be rubbing up yeah, on the riggers. You don't want you don't want that chair to be all the way to something. Yeah, if, if your chair is spun all the way over there, it means it's probably on a leader next to the side of the boat, and you're prepared that they, in case they have to let go of the wraps and release, and the fish takes off, you're going to be direct to the fish because you don't want that angle. Um, but yeah, they will turn the chair towards that fish when the fish is. And there's on a the man center. usually responsible for that chair rotation because the the angler is doing all. I mean, he's locked in. He's doing his thing, and somebody's standing behind. He or can't. Behind. Yeah, he can't. He can't do anything. The angler can't do a thing. Uh, it, ooh. Oh. <laughs> That's a big fish for a little That's guy. A big fish. <laughs> somebody lost a glove too. You saw guy, that too, right? Did you see the glove? Coat. Yeah. I did see that that glove. That looked like a hamburger helper ad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That big puffy white glove in that. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. You didn't see it? Right? I saw it. I saw it with you. It was, it was snagged on the line. Bobby, where are my gloves? Oh, my bad. Hang on, buddy. Break Get him in, bud. Let's go, Tuck. I got this. You know he's flexing that whole time, freeing the girls, you know, back at the Come house, on, you know. That's all natural, man. He's he's built like that. He doesn't have to do anything. Get him, son. Hey, pain is just weakness leaving the body, baby. <laughs> pain is coach. weakness We've leaving the body. That is, <laughs> that's rich. That's like I probably like have that. 500 miles on it. You know he's gonna go back and watch this and go, oh my gosh, why, why did they? Man, he's pretty good. Actually, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good saying. It's encouraging. Yeah, we usually see uh, Bobby Wade also with uh, the catches, but this, today's been all Tucker all the time uh, this week. Hasn't He's going to be tuckered out after this. I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, good one. No worry. You're good. You're good for whatever you And that good for one every now and then, every every 40 minutes. I still can't believe Badonka Don caught that giant fish at the at lines out pretty much, and now they're probably hauling butt. I mean, I don't know how fast that boat goes, but it's a 72 footer. I mean, maybe they, got they can go 40 knots. Uh, they got two hours. They can make it. They can make uh, it, I bet. Yeah, I mean, if they can get to I that I think they were right, right around the edge shot. of Venice. I think they're right around the edge. They're supposed to be in between the two buoys or whatever that makes up that Mississippi sound, okay. whatever are the rules. OK. But they well, are going to be heavier than what they were uh, just an hour ago. That's right. That's right. I mean, about, about another uh, 700 pounds heavier. Have any uh, additions to our? No, we didn't. Our Google thing. I'm wondering if, if they're still adding them on our stuff. We're still watching Team Bandito with their catch. Taco burrito. They're fishing with Team Bandito. Sorry, not luck. Don't remember. Again, catching uh, on day one. 6:50 in the afternoon, and then at 9:15 uh, this morning on day three. Both blue marlin caught by Tucker Wade. There's a tag. They call him a fatty. They're pulling their lure back, their long range lure back. He got that stiff rig in the corner of his mouth. Get there, get our uh, timer. 13 years old, releasing a beast. Uh, I remember what it was like being 13, about 137 years ago. Playing baseball, playing soccer, playing hockey, playing hockey, playing riding BMX. It was uh, all about being in the outdoors for me. So the day one catch and the day three catch and then doubling up again on another day three catch. It looks like I didn't have that in the uh, in my stats here, but 
Throw in that Mahi Mahi too, might win them some extra money. Extra coin, but all we know is they keep catching more and more fish. Look at that, they, they are hammer towns, what they ought to call Biloxi. <laughs> That's right. They got 14 more billfish than they did last year. They got 80 boats in the tournament this year. The bite was on fire. And you know, you, you know for a fact, you see that 81 there, but you know a lot Could of fish more. were missed. And there were a lot of fish that came up in those spreads that were never even seen. So it's alive and well, this fishery in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, remember uh, yesterday, we didn't think All In had any, and they had four. So there's going to be some teams that just didn't have communication or whatever. They're going to come in in time, and uh, they're going to have to declare their fish and have to show the video to prove it. Um, there's there's probably more fish out there than what we you know see right there on our ground. Yeah, there's always a few more that show up on the board at the end of the tournament that they couldn't get a hold of the committee boat, that couldn't get entered into the system, but they'll have proof with it with the cameras and the time codes. Look, Nikki Bella is it headed out on day one, gonna be heading back here on this third and final day. In Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua. We are proud, passionate, and full of life. On our island, adventure finds you. Strangers aren't strangers for long. The size of the audience doesn't change the beauty of the music. And we celebrate every last ray of sun. Live Boricua. the official sunglass partner of the Sport Fishing Championship. Well, we're waiting. I'm all right. Don't know about it, worry about me. You got to give me a fight. Why don't you just let me be? We all know Louisiana is as fun as all get out. So get out, take a road trip, and explore our state. Fill her up, then try a new restaurant that's as fun-loving as it is food-loving. Grab the family and take off for monumental adventures at our 21 state parks. Or take a magical minivan tour along our 19 scenic trails and byways. Louisiana's a trip. Take one today. This is Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. Plan your road trip at louisianastaycation.com. Whether you like to ride the wind, find your secret cove, or reel them in. Plot your paradise with GPS Map Series from Garmin. When you're serious, you are as excited to wake up for a 4 a.m. fishing trip as you were when you were a kid. It means winning three World Sailfish Championships. It means you know what you need and what you don't. Being serious means seeking out the ultimate fishing machine, which is what Peter Miller has found in the unmatched handling, speed, and comfort of an invincible. SFC coverage of the Mississippi Gulf Coast Billfish Classic is sponsored by Garmin. Invincible Boats. Visit South Padre Island. And by SFC Experience. I'm here at the Maritime and Seafood Industry Museum with Robin David, the Executive Director. So what are some of the exhibits that I can expect to see here today? Well, we have a great shrimp peeling machine upstairs that has been around in the factories for years and years, and it can peel a thousand pounds of shrimp an hour. 
These machines have been in existence from, from the beginning. Very basic, not much have changed. They lease the machines to the different factories. And as the shrimp are fed through the top of the machine down with plenty of water, they are peeled, which is amazing. And then there's another machine that they've invented that come from, that attaches and it deveins the shrimp. And then there's another one that attaches after that and it sizes the shrimp. It's amazing, a thousand pounds of shrimp an hour. And how much does this pill. thing weigh? This is some heavy duty equipment. It's extremely heavy. I don't know how many tons, <laughs> but we had to crane it in as one of the first items in the museum when we built. It, this is what actually called the workers to the factories every morning. Every factory had its own whistle, so each whistle had a different sound. And when that factory whistle blew at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning, they knew to get up, there's work at the factory, and get there as quick as you can. I mean, think about it, there was no phones, so they had no way of knowing <laughs> if, you know, if they had to get to work. So that was how they were called to work, was with the factory whistles. This actually labeled the cans of shrimp. Back in the day, they were canned. And this is the scales that they were used to be weighed on. That's what Biloxi was known for, the seafood industry. It's a melting pot of cultures, and that's why we are so unique here, because of the people that, that uh, moved to this area to harvest the seafood. And it's all been a big melting pot of cultures here, and that's what makes it so unique. Show me your shrimp. That's, that's what I love me some shrimp. You get that selenium in your veins, coursing through your veins. It makes you happy. It makes you feel good. It makes you a little pink, don't like get, a flamingo, like the shirt you're wearing line. right hey, now. You know that's my nickname on the guy's trip. You know that. Pink? Flamingo. Yeah. No, that too, Pink Floyd. Oh, there you go. It all works. I like that. There's our feature teams out on the water. All heading back, but generally kind of where they were. Um, welcome inside our studio here. We got Katie Sawyer too. She was going to bring her here in, in, in just a second. Um, you're seeing stuff go down. I'm seeing a lot of money at the last second that can be changed in hands. Katie, uh, we now have you live. Um, they're starting to bring in fish. I know Peter said uh, Houdini brought in an almost 500 now. Now these fish, we were talking earlier, and, and I know it, it just takes time. All of these fish that they do bring in, again, we don't have it in the sport fishing uh, championship side of things, but they bring in, they will be doing a lot of research on these fish. That's right, Robbie. We, uh, I was just counting a 121 on this mic check, and that's exactly how many <laughs> inches the fish is that just got brought to the dock today behind me by the salt shaker. They're about to put it on the scales. That's a big fish. I'm really curious to see what it's gonna, what it's gonna come out to. But just like you said, a lot of these fish, all of these fish that are being weighed today are going towards research. We have the Center of Fisheries and Research Development for USM here on site. We have NOAA on site with them and the University of Northern Florida. They're all catching specimen and a lot of what we know about the fish in the northern gulf we know because of the testing done at this very tournament Kate, katie what was one of the most uh, informative or favorite things that you learned when you were speaking to the scientists oh well that's I love it all. I can geek out on this forever. But uh, I don't know if you guys know, but the Gulf of Mexico record fish, 1,054.6 pound marlin was actually caught at this very tournament. And from research done on these fish, we know that they this isn't actually their spawning ground, which is really great news. If you know anything about fish, you know that the larger fish are the spawners. Those are the ones that are going to be making the babies laying the eggs, right? So we learned actually that the marlin Marlin are in the Gulf of Mexico might actually be spawning south in the Gulf around the Yucatan area, which I find absolutely fascinating. They learned that from the larval stage and the, the stomach contents and all sorts of stuff with the aging in the otoliths, which is the bone ears, and this, the the dorsal fins, which is crazy. They they take little slivers and they count them like rings on a tree, Man. and uh, it's pretty it's pretty incredible stuff what they can do. She's well educated, Peter. That, that, that's it. why that's why I didn't get my degree. That's why I didn't get my degree right there. <laughs> hey, Katie, you gonna be with us? Uh, you ready to do it again? I know uh, SFC will be covering the Gulf Coast Masters. You ready to do it? What ECBC uh, just two weeks from now, right? 
That's right. We're going to have the Gulf Coast Masters next weekend. We're going to have the ECBC the weekend after that. All of these teams are fishing it. It's uh, it's pretty amazing because fishing tournaments without pre-fishing is really kind of like a crapshoot. You never know. But these tournaments are all serving as a pre-fishing tri trip for the next tournament. These teams are back to back to back in the Gulf. It's like the Gulf trifecta. It's a pretty incredible opportunity here. I'm really excited to see what these teams are going to be pulling out of the northern Gulf of Mexico because it's the same stomping grounds. Yeah, that's a great job. Thank you, Katie. We're going to move on and take a look at Rising Suns, what they did. Katie's going to be at all of our stops and got me thinking, you know, with these back-to-back -back events, even an Atlantic team like Nikki Bella uh, is going to have a good opportunity to do something. Did you something. see what We're she did there? She talked about a crapshoot. Yeah, she was doing a double entendre on the Biloxi and the gambling and the, it's the whole thing. You focused on the crap. I was looking about uh, Rising Suns, maybe, you know, catching some bigs. I, I, I wanted it. I felt sick for this team, though, seeing the work that they put in on that yellowfin tuna and then losing it because, yes, we, we, we want to see blues. They got a big blue, but that tuna could have been worth a lot of money at the end of our rainbow um, as well in Puerto Rico. That's right. It is, it is a heartbreaker, but, uh, you know, they're really focused on their marlin, and they already have one of the biggest tunas or the biggest tuna as of right now in the championship division. They've got a jumbo marlin on the side of the boat here. They're probably thinking, what do we do with this one? Yeah. Let's take a measurement on this guy. Let's put a tag in him. Let's take a measurement. Let's compose ourselves. But we got a lunker on. That is a chunky monkey, chunky monkey. with a big blue eyes. That's a blue eyed girl. The um, one thing you talk about that big uh, yellow fin. Who caught that? That was Jason LeBlanc. When I'm looking at my stats, uh, Houdini with the biggest blue today. Um, so far, weighed in, caught by Lee LeBlanc. LeBlanc. I wonder if there's any relation. Both from Louisiana. We Probably. Know. Well, there's a lot of well, LeBlanc. Well, there's Matt LeBlanc yeah. from Friends. You know, they we know don't know. I don't, think he's a, I don't think he's related to him. But, yeah, they did weigh a 500-pounder. Well, no, no, no. 499.9. Listen, I'm a fisherman. I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him <laughs> the extra few ounces it takes to get him to 500. Do you think that, that guy's ever going to talk about his 499.9 pounder? People are going to be like, you lost me at 499. He's like, 49? It's 500, OK? About to go under the boat. <laughs> Quite a few heavy blues caught. We're seeing uh, one of the good sized big fish here by Rising Sun. Now, I heard word that they did release this fish. At this point, they think it is 110. We know Salt Shaker, CE, Real Fire, Briar Patch, it just takes time. We're bringing some in. And they're not even showing Badonka Donk. And we kind of know before they know. High five, better nice. As a magic queen. That is a big fish right there. Real big. I mean, she caught a she caught a, a, a large. I want to say, or somebody on their boat last year caught like a five or six hundred pounder in a in a all women's tournament. Robbie, the first time I I, I lead her to five hundred pound blue, my knees were shaking. Yeah, I was nervous. I was like, man, I don't want to go overboard. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna do my best. And that was back in the early '90s. Well, unless something crazy happens that we don't know about, let's go ahead and say it. Team All In is going to be your champion, and they did it by Blue Marlin on day number two. Greg Trenner getting it done once, twice, three times a lady. And then they got the fourth one just And they got four ladies, yeah. actually. They, they, they have a, a, be, a bevy of beauties, and you got the mate trying to paddle the boat just a little faster to get to that fish just a little faster. Just a little bit, baby. There's the captain. He rarely get to see the captain. He doesn't get a lot of recognition because he's up on top doing his thing, and he does a lot of nodding and a lot of waving, but it's nice to see him. Good work, Captain. I'm trying. You know, we were talking about the LeBlancs earlier, too. Houdini was the boat that Rising Suns was on, wasn't it? That is the same LeBlanc family. We were right. Yeah. That's his cousin. Ah, uh, that's a big fish, uh, a, a, a blue. You, you, you'd like to get some of those fun size to get them back a little quick, but again, that's the second. That or the is not third a fun size. That yeah. is an unfun size. <laughs> that is not funny size. That is real deal.
Um, salt shakers, in case you're wondering, that big that they brought, 121 incher, 723 pounds to the scales at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Billfish Classic. We could talk about the bigs, but we could also talk about the champion. All in, for all intents and purposes, looks like they are your winners here. And unofficially knocking off, it just takes time. Who went back to back to back? Could not do it four times in a row unless they have something come in within the next hour. I don't know what's going to happen. Two hours. They've got two hours to get it in and uh, by that check-in time. The quantified unofficially by our results right now. They're about 100 points ahead of Rebecca. Sport Fishing Champion uh, season will continue. Next week we'll have the Gulf Coast Masters. We uh, It will be an SFC event. Our next televised event will be the week following the uh, Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic. You ready to do that one too? Robbie, we are having too much fun. This should almost be illegal. We're having that much fun doing this. They're catching big fish on live TV. We get to talk about it. They get to catch them. Drags are screaming. This is a sport fishing championship, Robbie. Yeah, a big call by Chris Hargroder at the last minute. Live!